S Corporation, what is it and how can it help my business? After this, we will be able to describe what an S Corporation is. We want to list advantages and disadvantages of the S Corporation of formation and compare and contrast the S Corporation to other types of entities. First question, what is the difference between an S Corporation and a C Corporation? So when we think about the S Corporation, we obviously hear the word corporation in it. And when we think about corporations, we're probably thinking about large types of corporations, corporations like Apple that was going to have a lot of different shareholders within it. The major difference between an S corporation and a C corporation is that the S corporation is going to have the pass through entity, meaning that the money that is owned or earned by the S corporation will not be taxed on the corporate level. It's going to pass through to the individual level, meaning it's going to be taxed ultimately on the form 1040, not on the form 1120S. Let's take a look at that in a bit more detail. Like both the S corporation and the C corporation are going to have investors. The investors are going to buy shares. The shares are going to be the owners. So the owners of both an S corporation and a C corporation are going to be the shareholders within the company. Now, a very large company, a publicly traded company is going to be a C corporation. And uh, it is often going to have a lot of shareholders that are not directly involved in the decision making. Although it is possible to have a C corporation that is more closely owned, not publicly traded, usually that does have a lot more of the actual shareholders being involved in the decision making. So that's not really the distinguishing factor just in terms of size. The distinguishing factor is generally going to be that the S corporation is always going to be smaller owned. It's got to be less than 100 shareholders for sure. And usually at least a portion of them will be directly involved most of the time in decision making processes. In terms of the taxation then, the major difference being that the C corporation files an 1120 and then gets taxed at the C corporation level. As opposed to the S corporation which still has to file the 1120S for corporate taxes but the income doesn't get taxed on that level. It's more like an information form and then the, the income will go to the shareholders and be taxed on the 1040. So it's gonna flow through in that way. It's gonna flow through in this way and be taxed on this level, not this level. That's the major difference. How do those two get connected? They get connected with a form K1. You can think of it kind of like a W2 in that the 1120 is gonna report on the K1, the income that's going to be allocated to the shareholders on the form uh, K1 that will then be going to uh, the individual's 1040. All right, why does it matter if the tax is at the corporate level or the individual level, you might ask? It's taxed one way or the other. What's the difference? Well, one problem with the C corporation is usually to get the money out of the C corporation could result in double taxation, meaning that if it's taxed on the corporate level, then it's going to be taxed on the corporate level. And if you want to draw it out, you can't draw it out like a draw like you would on a sole proprietor. You can't just take it out. You have to take it out in the form of a dividend, and dividends are currently taxable so that you have this double taxation problem it's harder to draw the money out without having double taxation in a c corporation now you could pay yourself wages or do some other things but that's the main issue in terms of the complication of a c corporation is how do you get the money out without the double taxation you also could have differences in the rates remember that the corporate tax rate is one of the higher tax rates in the world on the on the corporate tax rate the individual tax rates are going to be progressive in nature so it depends on who the investors are, who the owners are, but uh, it is possible if we take that income on the S corporation and divide it up to multiple owners uh, to then take advantage of the lower tiers of the progressive tax rate. We know that you know the first amount of dollars don't get taxed and then the next amount of dollars gets taxed at 10% and then 15%. So, and then it climbs upwards. If you can take advantage of those lower tax brackets, as you disperse the income to different shareholders, it's possible that you can have uh, lower taxes overall as well in that way as well. What other benefits might S corporation structure provide? One of the main reasons like uh, why a sole proprietor or a partnership might want to have an S corporation is the liability protection, meaning that the corporation is a separate legal entity. Separate legal entity means that if someone sued the company or something like that, if there's a liability problem, the idea being that they can only go after the company assets, not the personal assets. That's the major benefit of an S corporation type structure. You can also have capital investments being more possible. So if we wanted to uh, get money for the business from investors, 
we could sell equity interest by selling shares of the stock and people are more likely to put money into uh, equity interest in a corporation because of that liability protection meaning the money that they're putting in they could lose that of course but they're less exposed in terms of their personal liability that's why it's going to be easier to collect capital from investors in an equity fashion uh, in a uh, S corporation rather than like a sole proprietor or partnership most of the time is it possible to set up an S corporation with only one shareholder it is you can have an S corporation with a single member corporation S corporation why would you do that major reason oftentimes is going to be this liability protection and there could be some tax consequences that we'll take a look at here so the tax consequences so Another reason that you're going to hear a lot of times if you start talking about an S corporation is the idea that uh, we can lower the Social Security and Medicare taxes currently. Laws could change, but currently uh, it's possible to end up paying less in terms of Social Security and Medicare taxes. Why, why would that happen? Let's look at a scenario. Let's say the corporation has 100000 of income, income minus expenses, taxable income, 100000 Now, if that 100000 just flowed through to the shareholders, it would not be subject to Social Security and Medicare. So there would be no Social Security and Medicare tax paid on it. And of course, the IRS doesn't like that. The IRS wants someone to pay Social Security and Medicare because the idea being that if you're a single member S corporation, especially if you don't have any employees, then it's obvious that you are the employee and therefore you should be subject to you know employee taxes, Social Security and Medicare. So the IRS requires that you would have to pay yourself a reasonable wage. What is a reasonable wage? We don't really know. <laughs> so you have to kind of figure that out. IRS would probably think that the 100000 is a reasonable wage. We would want to think of a reasonable wage of less than that. Let's say we say a reasonable wage is 80000 Then that would mean that we would file 80000 and give ourselves a W-2 for the 80000 and pay Social Security and Medicare on that. The difference between the hundred and the eighty being 20000 would then not be subject to the Social Security or Medicare tax. So that's where the saving would be in this scenario. So let's go through that one more time. If we had the S corporation made 100,000, then uh, that whole thing would be subject to federal income tax, but may not be subject to, uh, the whole thing may not be subject to Social Security and Medicare. We would have to pay ourselves a reasonable wage. If we said it was 80,000, then that, uh, would be reported on our 1040 in, with a W-2. The W-2 would report the 80000 We would pay uh, federal income tax on the 1040 related to that, and we would have to pay Social Security and Medicare. And then the S Corporation would report to us in the form of a K-1, 20000 that would also flow through to the 1040, but the 20000 not subject to Social Security and Medicare tax. So that's the advantage at this point in time. Do other entities have to pay Social Security and Medicare if we were going to compare this to other entities? Yes, they do. And that's the major benefit here. So sole proprietors uh, have to file uh, self-employment tax, which is paying Social Security and Medicare. So they, if you're a sole proprietor, that's you have to do that. And that's one of the, if you talk to someone about setting up an S corporation, that's probably one of the major kind of points that might come up. You can you can do this. And and again, it might change in the future. You don't really know if the, if the IRS will change that law and make the S corporation tax uh, subject to Social Security and Medicare, but right now it's a big uh, uh, possible advantage. Partnership and liability, a limited liability company. So oftentimes the choice is between a limited liability and an S corporation. Limited liability still has to pay uh, the Social Security and Medicare as well. So again, even if between those two, the S corporation has that as an advantage. Uh, what are the disadvantages? it's more costly to set up an S corporation. So let's just go through some of the costs. I mean, if you're a sole proprietor or a partnership, you just start doing business really for income tax purposes and you are considered to be that and you're gonna just file a Schedule C and that's basically it. Uh, the S corp includes, this as part of the process just to give you an idea if you're gonna get someone to set it up or if you're setting up an S corp yourself, you have to go to the state that you're at and you have to go to the Secretary of State. You gotta file articles of incorporation and look at your Secretary of State website on how to do that. You may have to file a statement of information also with the Secretary of State, depending on the state that you are in, so you can find the directions on that. Oftentimes you have to file this, you know, every two years or something like that. Then you have to go to the IRS, and then that's the Fed, get a form 2553, election by a small business corporation, and that's gonna basically tell the IRS, hey, I don't wanna be a C corporation, we wanna be an S corporation, gotta make sure to file that separately uh, within the first year 
And then you're going to have to file an SS4 application for employer identification number as well with the IRS. That's basically going to be like your social security number for the IRS for the business. That's the number that they see you as when you, when you file anything with the IRS. Um, so obviously that's going to be more costly to set up. So if you're talking to someone to set it up, that's going to be a bit of a process to set that up. What else? We're also going to have more costly tax preparation and paperwork. So we should have meetings of the board uh, periodically. We should have minutes to, to document this information. And uh, when we file the tax form, instead of just like a sole proprietor just having a Schedule C, we would have to file a whole nother 1120S, even though the tax isn't going to be taxed here. It's a flow-through entity. The 1120S is going to be a lot more detailed than a Schedule C. usually includes a balance sheet as included as well as an income statement, as opposed to the Schedule C, which really is just an income statement. That then will have the K-1. The K-1 will then flow through to the 1040 over here. So it's a bit longer of a process, this uh, 1120S, if you're a single member LLC versus a um, uh, S corporation. If, you're, if you are a sole proprietor versus a single member uh, S corporation, then this is going to be a much more costly generally than just filing uh, Schedule C. Uh, any other disadvantages? And there's going to be some other kind of topics that you just want to keep in mind and do some research on. Uh, must have payroll even if you're only a single member. So again, if you're if you're a sole proprietor and comparing a sole proprietor to a uh, S corporation or even an LLC, note that if you don't have any employees and you're a sole proprietor and possibly an LLC, you may not, you probably don't have to deal with payroll at all, which is great because payroll can be difficult to deal with, can cost a lot of money, cause problems and whatnot. If you're a single member S corporation, remember that you have to do payroll because the IRS is going to require you to have this reasonable wages be paid so that you are paying at least some Social Security and Medicare or else the IRS will probably question that because they want you to pay some Social Security and Medicare. So you have to deal with payroll. Only one class of stock. So an, a C corporation could have multiple classes of stock. If you're thinking about between an S corporation, and LLC, or a partnership, a partnership agreement actually has a lot more flexibility in terms of how you set up the agreement. So if you wanted to have some kind of weird profit sharing agreement where someone does a lot of work in the company and you want to give them like a, a set distribution uh, amount per year of the income or have a, a distribution based on capital distributions, you can do a lot of different things in a partnership agreement on that. Uh, the S corporation, of course, all the stocks are the same. So different people can own different amounts of stocks and whatnot, but all the stocks are the same. So there's a bit less flexibility in terms of, you know, how you're going to set up your profit sharing and whatnot. Limited to 100 shareholders. This usually isn't a problem for most small companies, you know, but uh, you can't have more than 100 shareholders. It's going to be a small uh, company uh, or a small ownership pool of 100 cannot have another company as the shareholder. So if you have some kind of complex structure where you want to have a parent company owning it or something like that, that's going to be a problem there most of the time. Shareholders must be citizens and non-resident aliens. So you can't have, uh, if you have foreign investors and whatnot, that could be a problem. And you may have state tax fees. So like in California, for example, al although the income flows through from the S corporation to the individual return, they may have an individual fee or a tax, basically whatever they want to call it, it's going to be uh, a tax on the state. So you want to see what are they going to be the taxes on the state and what are the comparison, if you're comparing between like a S corporation and an LLC, what are the differences in the tax rates in the state that you're in uh, between those two things. And it could be costly to liquidate. This is something that's often overlooked. Uh, it's almost harder to liquidate in some ways than it is to, uh, to set up the, the S corporation and if you don't liquidate it properly, then it's a problem, especially if you're in a state that charges you a fee because like if you're in California and you don't liquidate it properly, you're just going to keep getting taxed this $800 each year until it gets closed out properly. And that uh, that could cause some problems. So if you're closing up a corporation or any kind of entity, make sure to to do that properly and get it done. And that'll save you a lot of a lot of headache.